The eternal principle of love is manifested by living the two great commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I remember my first winter living here in Utah. The snow everywhere. Coming from the Sonoran Desert, the first day I was enjoying it, but after a few days, I realized that I had to get up earlier to remove the snow from the driveway. One morning, in the middle of a snowstorm, I was sweating, shoveling the snow, and I saw my neighbor opening his garage across the street. He's older than I am, so I thought, if I can finish soon, I could help him. So raising my voice, I asked, brother, do you need help? He smiled and said, thank you, Elder Montoya. Then he pulled a snowblower out of his garage. <laughs> I started the engine, and in a few minutes, he removed all the snow in front of his house. He then crossed the street with his machine and asked me, Elder, do you need help? <laughs> with a smile, I said, yes, thank you. We are willing to help each other because we love each other. And my brother's needs become my needs, and mine become his. No matter what language my brother speaks or what country he comes from, we love each other because we are brothers, children of the same father. When ministering was announced, President Nelson said, we will implement a newer, holier approach to caring for and ministering to others. To me, holier means more personal, deeper, more like the Savior's way have love one to another, one by one. It is not enough to avoid being nice to be blocked for others. It is not enough to notice the needy on the road and pass by. Let us take advantage of every opportunity to help our neighbor, even if it is the first and only time we meet him in this life. Why is love for God the first great commandment? I think it's because of what he means to us. We are his children. He oversees our welfare. We are dependent on him, and he, his love protects us. His plan includes agency. Therefore, we will likely make some mistakes. He also allows us to be tested and tempted. But whether we are making some mistakes or falling into temptation, the plans provides a savior so we can be redeemed and returned to the presence of God. Adversity in our lives can cause doubt about the fulfillment of the promises that have been made to us. Please trust in our Father. He always keeps his promises, and we can learn what he wants to teach us. Even doing what is right, the circumstances in our life can change from good to bad, from happiness to sadness. God answers our prayers according to his infinite mercy, love, and in his own time. The brook where Elijah drank water dried up. Nephi's fine steel bow was broken. A young boy was discriminated against and expelled from the school. A long-awaited fourth child died within days of being born. Circumstances change. When circumstances change from good and positive to bad and negative, we can still be happy because happiness does not depend on the circumstances, but on our attitude toward the circumstances. President Nelson said, the joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and everything to do with the focus of our lives. We can sit back and wait for circumstances to change in their own, or we can look for and bring about new circumstances. Elijah walked to Seraphat, where a widow gave him food and drink. Nephi made a wooden bull and hunted animals to it. The young boy sat listening and taking notes by the window, and today he is an elementary school teacher. 
The couple has developed a great faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ, and trust in the plan of salvation. Their love for the long-awaited child who died suddenly is greater than their grief. When I hear the question, Heavenly Father, are you really there? And do you hear and answer every child's prayer? I like to answer, he has been, he is, and he will always be there for you and me. I am his son, he is my father, and I am learning to be a good father as he is. My wife and I always try to be there for our children at any time, under any condition and by any means. Each child is unique. The word to God is great, and no matter what challenges and sins and weaknesses they have, God loves them, and so do we. When I received this call as a general authority on the last day before our travel to Salt Lake, all my children and their families were together in our home for a family home evening, where we expressed our love and gratitude. After the lesson, I gave a priesthood blessing to each one of my children. Everyone was in tears. After the blessing, my oldest son expressed words of gratitude in behalf of everyone for the great love that we had given them for the day they were born until then. Bless your children, whether they are five or 50 years old. Be with them. Be for them. Although providing is a responsibility established by divine design, we must not forget to share joyful time with our children. Our Heavenly Father's love for each of His children is real. He is there for each one. I don't know how He does it, but He does. He and His firstborn are one in doing the work and glory of the Father to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of men. They have sent us the Holy Ghost to guide us, to warn us, to comfort us if necessary. He instructed His beloved Son to create this beautiful earth he instructed Adam and Eve and gave them to them their agency. He has been sending messengers for years and years so that we can receive His love and His commandments. He was in the sacred grove answering John Joseph's sincere question and calling him by his name. He said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. I believe that the supreme demonstration of God's love for us happened in Gethsemane where the Son of the living God prayed, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. I have noticed that the small portion that I can understand of the Atonement of Jesus Christ increases my love for the Father and His Son, decreases my desire to, be, to sin and to be disobedient, and increases my willingness to be better and do better. Jesus walked with no fear and with no doubt to Gethsemane, trusting in his Father. Knowing that he must tread the winepress alone, he endured all pain and all humiliation. He was accused, judged, and crucified. During his own agony and suffering on the cross, Jesus focused on the needs of his mother and his beloved disciple. He offered his life. On the third day, he was resurrected. The tomb is empty. He stands on the right hand of his Father. They hope we, we, they hope we will choose to keep our covenants and return to their presence. This second state is not our final state. We do not belong to this earthly home, but rather we are eternal beings living temporary experiences. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and He lives. And because He lives, all of God's children will live forever. And thanks to His atoning sacrifice, we cannot live together with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.